Inside each single-celled bacterium is a molecule of DNA, the code of life, which allows them to multiply. There are millions of bacteria in each snotite. And down in the underground streams, Penny Boston has found different kinds of bacteria in slimy clumps she calls phlegm balls. In fact, the cave is home to a huge number of bacterial colonies. And astonishingly, instead of being poisoned by the hydrogen sulfide, these bacteria depend on it for their survival. They take the hydrogen sulfide and they get chemical energy out of it. It doesn't poison them, it's home sweet home for them. And this is a pretty new finding for these organisms. Conditions on early Earth may have been far worse, but these bacteria suggest that primitive life could have thrived in extremely hostile environments. But where did the very first life come from? For more than a century, scientists have known that life is the result of chemistry, the combination of just the right ingredients and just the right amounts. Today we know these ingredients aren't things like dirty garments and wheat, which people used to think would spontaneously generate mice. Ingredients of life are actually much simpler. All living things, from bacteria to mice to you and me, are made from a small set of chemical elements. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, four of the most common elements in the universe. Combined in just the right way, these are the fundamental ingredients of life. And carbon is the star of the show. Carbon's everywhere. It's all over the universe. What makes carbon special is the kind of bonds that it makes, both with itself and with other elements. We know of no other atom that has the flexibility that carbon has to form diverse types of compounds. And the idea that life could have started when carbon and other ingredients combined in the harsh conditions of early Earth was first put to the test in the 1950s by a young graduate student named Stanley Miller. To simulate the newborn Earth in the lab, Miller assembled a contraption made out of flasks and tubes. He filled one flask with gases thought at the time to represent Earth's primitive atmosphere. And he connected that to another flask with water to represent the oceans. And then he did a brilliant thing. He simply put an electric charge through that to essentially simulate lightning going through an early atmosphere. And after sitting around for a couple of days, all of a sudden there was all this brown goo all over the, the reaction vessel. And when he analyzed what was in the vessel, now he actually had amino acids. Amino acids are compounds that form when molecules of carbon and other elements link together. They are the essential building blocks of proteins and cells, vital ingredients of all living things. Stanley Miller's experiment was headline news and jump-started the scientific search for the origins of life. Well, life is really chemistry. There's no question about that. In fact, it's a chemistry that when you get the recipe right, it goes, and it goes fairly quickly. That recipe is hotly debated today. And most scientists think the environmental conditions on early Earth were very different from the ones Miller simulated in his lab. And another debate rages about when this recipe first got cooked up. On our 24-hour clock, the barrage of asteroids and comets lasted from about midnight until almost 3.30 in the morning. The assault then weakened 
but continued for more than 100 million years. It's hard to believe that life could have gained a foothold during this unstable period. But new discoveries reveal that life may have existed as early as four in the morning, or about 3.8 billion years ago. The evidence comes from some of the oldest rocks on the planet, found in the remote regions of West Greenland. The geology of Greenland is unique. It contains a record of some of the uh, earliest geological processes that we know of on the Earth. The rocks themselves are thought to be between 3.7 and 3.9 billion years in age. These rocks are so old that any fossils they once contained have been destroyed. So to find out if life existed when they formed, Moisish had to look for evidence that is far more elusive. There may have at one time been small fossils, microfossils, but under the conditions of heat and pressure that these rocks experienced, such fossils would have been disaggregated and destroyed. So what we have left behind then are uh, chemical fingerprints of ancient bacteria or microbes. To search for those fingerprints, Moisish first extracts a sample from the ancient Greenland rocks. Then, he will analyze its chemical composition, looking for carbon, a signature of life. But carbon comes in several different forms. And Moisish wants to know if the carbon in this sample is the kind left behind by living creatures. If so, he believes that life may have existed when these rocks formed over 3.8 billion years ago. A controversial claim. It was a surprise for us to find evidence of ancient life in these rocks. We didn't know if it would be there. You know, just because the stage is set doesn't mean that the actors are present. But these samples here represent the first evidence we have direct evidence of a biosphere on our planet. If it emerged so early, life was lucky to miss the greatest cataclysm of all time. An impact like no other in our planet's history. It happened when another rocky sphere about the size of Mars collided with Earth. The outer layers of our planet were vaporized and the debris from this collision coalesced to form the moon. That impact was so powerful that any building blocks of life that existed on Earth would have been destroyed. This gives rise to speculation that the ingredients of life didn't form on Earth at all, but arrived special delivery from outer space. <laughs> <laughs>